Hey, this is Kevin Kitchens with Once Upon a Game, and as promised, uh, this is part two of my Great Western Trail um, Audubon uh, run-through. This is going to be the what I call the Son of Briscoe. This is the Garth variant. This one was designed by um, Steve Schlepphorst. Uh, the deck was uh, helped. He was helped by David Lavoy and Andreas Resch on this one. And this one derives from the, uh, like I said, from the Briscoe Automa created by Will Gherkin that we did in the previous video. Um, this one is a more specialized um, Automa. The AI will, uh, you choose at the beginning uh, the, uh, the uh, worker uh, specialization that the game will take. Uh, in this case, I randomly drew an extra cowboy. Uh, so the, uh, so Garth will favor cowboys and take different actions based on the fact that he's specializing uh, in that uh, in that line, in that strategy. So um, how this one works is similar to the other one. This is a deck of 15 cards. You do not remove any cards based on um, skill level. Um, there are some uh, variations that do happen based on skill level. You see these right here. Um, uh, this one has four levels easy medium hard and very hard uh, again like the uh, like briscoe uh, the first delivery would be to wichita for easy mode medium mode is colorado springs uh, however this one skips to albuquerque for the hard mode um, some scoring differences um, uh, this is definitely this is an icon based uh automa you know cards um show you those a few of those um, so and there and the rules are very good at translating sorry they're kind of shiny i do them sleeved um uh so they did the tailor and things to do like in in the case of this one it's uh you're gonna move your uh cattleman uh one space on the board and then you will take the greatest coin value uh tb tile uh, negotiate trading with the indians so uh we'll go through those as we as we go um the ones you're seeing here, um, I took the original ones are actually made to be the same size as the uh, Great Western Trail cards. And I do not have sleeves for that size, and I wanted to make sure I sleeved them. So I went and Photoshopped and enlarged them uh, and made them standard, standard poker sized, uh, just adding a little bit of border to them and uh, uh, just a little white border there as well. To make them a little easier for me to work with. Um, for the setup, it is pretty much the same. My board is set up as per normal. So I'm the best color again, blue. I've already shuffled my cattle deck. Um, I have randomly determined my tiles. Uh, basically just roll a die on each one and go A, B for them. So that's what I've got. With the uh, with uh, Garth He's only going to, uh, he, he doesn't care about uh, increasing his movement. He has some other benefits that allow him to move faster or slower. Um, so his tokens just, uh, Briscoe would have these two uh, still to use when he got to a, to a uh, dark city. And uh, in this case, he doesn't need that. They just, they just go there. He also does not track certificates. He used that to track his specialty specialization, which in this case, like I said, is Cowboys, and I did that just by drawing from the number two cup there uh, before I set up anything on the board. And he starts with a, uh, a worker of that specialization. So, uh, so basically, as he puts out tokens, he'll just put them on the, on the board there um, from just, you know, generic pile of his tokens. Um, unlike the uh, Briscoe Automa, uh, you will start first. Um, and he, he goes second. You again can go anywhere on the board. Uh, you get six gold, obviously, because you start first. And then he starts at the start space. He doesn't, he doesn't start a random spot. Uh, he, will not, he will not score from the Station Master tiles. He will take them if they're available. Um, but he will not score any of the points. Um, he will score for... Upgrading the stations, though. He just won't get any of those perks from the actual tiles, but he'll remove them so you don't get them. Uh, he does get the 
uh, bonuses in the cities. He will get those. As he takes parallel cities, he'll get a, a objective card and he'll earn the bonus points throughout. Um, he's he's a very tough, tough competitor. He will have different rules on what he can buy. I've got the cattle market set out already. He will have different rules on what he can buy. Um, based on the number of uh, cowboys he has. Sometimes he will use a cowboy to put out more cards before he then uses the rest of the cowboys to, to purchase. He always has eight uh, money to spend. So you basically just work, figure out what the best victory point total is. In my previous game, it actually came out better for, the, uh, for him to take uh, the two uh, cards get him more victory points uh, than I think taking the single four that was out or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but uh, so you look at that. Um, he does get a starting objective card. That's his there. Same same general rule. Uh, any cattle he buys, any objective cards just go in the pile that's scored at the end of the game. He will not get the victory points there for the speed increase. Uh, you can get that. You score normally. So uh, he will not get any of those. Um, and that's my objective card that I started with. Uh, he always puts the B side of his tiles down. And, and just like Briscoe, he'll put them out in front of you. Um, and then he favors putting out a new tile versus upgrading a tile. Um, so he... Um, and then he also favors uh, putting out ones that cost you money. So if he puts out the first tile between these two ones, he'll put out the one, that one there first. And then he would put that one out if he had another one. And then should he be able to upgrade, then he'd, then he'd be working through those. So we'll get to that possibly in the first run. Um, yeah, oh, objective cards. So another interesting twist here. One thing with uh, Briscoe is that he took the highest value objective card. And in this case, uh, Garth will always take this objective card. And so, like, if he takes this one, you'll slide the rest down and then draw the new one there. So if you take an objective card, you slide them down and go there. Also, he will, when he's handling the uh, forecast up there, he will always take the top row. So when you take whatever you want, whatever ones you want, uh, you slide them all to the top. The remaining ones always get slid up to the top row, and then you refill it to the bottom. If he takes them, he always takes the top row. So uh, there may be a few other nuances. He doesn't do anything in steps four or five other than just place a token on the next city and uh, and then come back to start and start a new turn. Same rules in terms of travel. He will go the shortest route to Kansas City at all times. So, gotta be careful with that. If you wanna try to trap him, you gotta make sure you're not making the route longer. Um, so, that is pretty much the setup. So now I'm ready to start. I've drawn my, my initial hand of four. I've got uh, uh, five built up right now. I'm gonna try to get a worker to start with, to start my turn. So, I can go anywhere on the board to start, so I will go here. And I'm going to turn in my Guernsey for two money. So turn that in. Take two, and then I'm going to hire uh, from the market. I'm going to hire this cowboy because I want to keep him from being the cowboy. Plus, I want to get some cattle out. And if you look at the market here, we've already got a five out. Uh, and several fours, so I need to get where I can be buying these as soon as possible. So that is my goal. So that guy's sitting there for six. Garth is going to favor uh, cowboys. I want to keep those away from him if I can. So that's the end of my turn. Draw a card. All right, did not hurt me. Okay, Garth's turn. I'm helping out Mel and Briscoe. All right, so the instructions here are to move one, and then we're gonna take uh, a hazard tile. So he moves, he moves one on the trail. That's always the first space. He does no actions at the, at the location. And then what happens here is you look at all the hazard sets with the uh, 
most, find the one with the most hazards, and you're going to take that one. From that one, you will take the highest uh, reward value, as noted by the icon there. The icons are great on this. They really, really are very clear. So if we look here, there are none in the desert. There are two in the rock slide section, and there are also two here in the flood section. So, uh, but this one has a four. The other one was two, three. So he's going to take this one for four points. Goes into his pile. And that is his turn. Runs, again, just like Briscoe, runs very simply. All right, I think for my turn, I am going to uh, go ahead and try to get my uh, certificate moved a little bit. So I'm going to go here. And using my certificate, advance it one. Okay, and then for every engineer I have, I can move my train one. So I have just the starting engineer of one. So we're gonna just get, get my train on the board and get it moving out there. All right, that is my turn is complete. And I did not use any cards, so I have no cards to draw. Go to Garth. All right, we're gonna go to cattle market with him. All right, so here's one of the things with the specialties. Okay, first of all, this says for as many cowboys as he has, move the cattleman that much. He has two, so he's going to move two. One, two. Okay. Now, the marshal token says it indicates specialty. So this says if his specialty is cowboys, then he's going to take this, this action. His specialty is cowboys, so he is going to take this action and go to the cattle market. So how you play this is, uh, he's going to do one, one by one cow, uh, or excuse me, one of the cow options. In this case, he would get two cows, possibly. So you do, you have, he has eight money to spend, and he will get the highest victory points he can. So with two cowboys, his options are. He can buy a three for three, or he could buy a five for 12. So he is, he's stuck at eight right now, so he can't do that. So his best option with just two cowboys and eight dollars is to buy a three for three. So then you look at the threes, and he's gonna take the one with the highest victory point value, which is the brown Swiss. It goes into his pile. Turns complete. Again, very, very simple, and we've just gone through two of the cards. But he's also catching up to me very quickly. So I have no money at this time, but I can get a three in from the cattle market, and I do want to spend that because uh, I do want to try to get him anyway because I need uh, more threes in. I need, to get, I need to make sure I'm staying on the high end of the, of the deliveries. So I'm going to just go here. I'm going to discard the Black Angus for two money. Okay, I'm going to go to Cattle Market. It's my next action. And I have two Cowboys, so with two Cowboys I can buy a three for three. I'm going to take this guy, throw that in my deck, and of course pay for it with three money. And simple. Now I have used a card, so I'll draw another one to replenish my deck. I got another blank Angus, so I'm doing good. At least I can still deliver to uh, Colorado Springs for the uh, first one, hopefully. All right, so Garth's turn, not Briscoe. All right, he's going to move forward two. So he goes, he goes one, two. And he's done. And then this, because it doesn't have the Marshall badge behind it, it's not a specialty, it just says for every engineer, move his train forward one. So he has one engineer, so he moves his train forward one. And per the rules, he gets to skip me. So now he is in the lead on the train, so I gotta be careful with that. And again, his turn is done. Right, I think I want to try to get into Kansas City first. I have two, three, four, five, six. 
So that's going to allow me to get into Kansas City first and get into uh, into Colorado Springs and kind of control control the board there. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to go one, two, three, and I am going to choose. I'm going to throw that. I'm going to throw the TP out. Put it on the board. And I'm going to take this guy because it doesn't matter which one I take there. And I'll put him into the market. Slide that down. Okay. And then of these two, I want some engineers. So I'm going to go ahead and throw that out to get him ready for the next buying round. So then normally I would shift these all up, but they're already up. So we don't have to worry about it. So I go into here. And I determine that I have two, three, Discard five and one gives me six. I'll bring six down here. Okay. And then I'm going to move up here and deliver to Colorado Springs of six. And I will take, I'm going to go ahead and take my draw and discard, get that moving. So I want to get stuff on the board. Put it onto this to Colorado Springs six and I've got one two three uh, uh, transport costs so throw that in there take two back and that's done I got three what other deal and I'll have to call it a springs I get no bonus and come back to the start and replenish the job market So we got one, the GB, two, another engineer, or yeah, engineer, three, there's another engineer. Ooh, a lot of engineer convention going on here. Okay, so he is up there, that is my turn, and I redraw my hand. One, Two, three, four. Okay. All right, his turn. All right, Garth is going to move two. Now, again, just like with Briscoe, he will he will finish the whole card, even if he gets to Kansas City. So he's gotten to Kansas City with two. But first, he will put out a building, and he will put out a building based on his. Uh, Builders, his craftsman. So he has one, so he can put out one of his one buildings. He will put it in front of me. And again, he will favor the buildings that um, uh, have fees attached to them that will collect fees basically from me. He doesn't get the fees, but he penalizes me. So then looking here, the first open space on the board is that one right there. Um, and it's closest, so I'm not going to roll for it. I could. He, uh, it's actually in the rules that he will use a non-risk space. So this is the closest non-risk space where he can put something. So that is now on the board, and he uses the B side. Okay. So he's going to start taxing me two every time I go by there. All right, so I'm going to discard that, but he's still in Kansas City. So let's finish that. So he takes the top one of everything. So the rock slide goes there. Goes here. The craftsman goes there. And then these all slide up. And he comes in here, and all he's going to do again is take one of his tokens off the board. And he puts it in Colorado Springs because it's the first place for this level, the regular level that he's going to go. He is done. He comes back. Good start. And then we replenish the market again. And there come the cowboys. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, so we're at my turn now. Alright, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here. And for every engineer, I can move forward one. So I have one engineer. So 
that I leapfrog him. Downside is he's going to be able to leapfrog me. And then I also choose to take this action and I'm going to use my double action, which I took as the draw discard two. Try to get my hand better. So draw one. Draw two. Okay, so now that's basically a duplicate, completely duplicate hand here. But looking ahead, I have a green belt that I can discard if I stop there. So I want to definitely keep him. And I've got a Guernsey I can discard as well. So I'm going to go ahead and drop the jerseys because they're more prevalent. Get them out of my deck, or out of my hand. Garth draws. He's going to move forward two. So he moves one. And technically he can go either direction. It doesn't matter because you don't block each other. So he's just going to go there because uh, they're both closest to that. So we'll just put it on its own tile. Now this is the different one. It says if he's specializing in engineers, he would move his train forward. And that little symbol down there at the bottom means he will actually go into a station if he were to pass one. And uh, uh, he would take he would take any uh, station master tile that were still available and move one of his counters into there. So he is not specializing in engineers, so therefore he is done after moving two. All right, so my turn, no matter what I do, is going to cost me. Because if I go if I take the low road, it's going to cost me. And if I take the high road, it's going to cost me two. So it doesn't really matter. So we're just going to go ahead and move two to there. And I'll pay my penalty since I have it. It's great when you don't have the money, and then you can just skip it all. All right, I'm going to discard a Dutch belt for two money. i get the two back. And then I can play one of my buildings, which I believe I will, in fact, do. Uh, and I can play it, uh, and, and you know, pay the two penalty. So I have I have one craftsman, so I can build one of my one buildings. And I am going. That lets me discard a an objective from hand and move two, or I can move my train back one and take three. Um, and as much as I want to get the two money when he passes me, it basically means he goes the other route. So I'm going to do this one for my benefit. And I'm going to place it on the board. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place it here. Give myself a chance to get some You know what? I'm going to place it actually further up. Because I may end up drawing some cards later. And I want to be able to get money like right before I go into the cattle market. Alright, so one worker cost me two money to put that out. So I've done that. And I did discard a card, so I draw a card. Got another black Angus, that's good. So I got a good hand going right now with six. Alright. Garth's turn. Okay, so what this card says is that Garth's going to move forward one. So the first thing he does, move to there. And what this says is whatever employee he has the most of, he's going to hire another one of those. Okay, so we're going to look over here. And he has the most of cowboys. And we're going to look at the market, and there are no cowboys. So the next option is to... Um, uh, take from the cheapest row, cheapest employee, and then work your way to the top left. So we have two rows of six. Can't buy from here yet. Two rows of six. So you start at the top left and work your way around. So he's going to buy this engineer. Now this one goes on his board. He does not get to use these actions. Uh, and in this this one, I have not checked, but I did not let him because of the way the other restrictions are. I'm not letting him take these either um, on the cowboy. Uh, that may be wrong. Uh, that's what we did on Briscoe, but when I played the previous game, I just left that out because he's pretty tough already as it is. So he gets this. He doesn't get to take this action, but he is here now. Now, one thing you'll notice is that uh, he is tied engineer with engineers at Cowboys. He has uh, two of each. He will not switch uh, specialties 
unless he gets another engineer. If he does get another engineer, he will now focus. We'll move this marker down here, and he will then become an engineer specialty. So uh, that may be to your advantage, especially if, if the uh, cattle market looks strong. So it's something to consider uh, when you're when you're playing the game. So uh, he's done. We took care of that and took care of the other. So we'll just turn him. I will take my turn, and I'm going to. Um, unfortunately, there is nothing that I can afford to buy in the cattle market because I do not have. Uh, I only have two cowboys, and I don't have 12 money to buy that guy, and I don't have 12 money to buy any of these because I don't have three cowboys either. So going to that option is not very good. But I'm just going to go here and discard the Guernsey. Take two money and not do any hiring. So it turns over to four, throwing a card, which is my last card, and that does give me a jersey, which guarantees me an eight if I can get my uh, certificate to draw. So, okay, but it is his turn. Okay, so this says for each worker you have that you're specializing in, move your cowboy forward. He is specializing in cowboys. He has two, so he moves two forward. Again, moving the shortest route, he's going to go here. And then we've got the situation here where they're both going this way, and it's still two each way. But it doesn't really matter since mine is not a uh, payment space. He's just going to go. I'll just, have him go. I'll just have him go here for the fun of it. But it wouldn't matter. But he still goes the shortest route, and those two became the same amount of distance. Okay. And then if he's specializing in engineers, which he's not yet, he will move forward and again take... Uh, move into a station as he, if he can. And he would move forward, I believe, the number of engineers that he has. So with my turn, I am just going to take the same route here and play it safe. So I'm going to move my certificate down one. That guarantees I'm going to get to eight. And then for every engineer I have, I can move my train forward one. And I have one engineer. So I'm going to move here. Now I'm in risky territory. So he's going to jump ahead if he moves his train. I have no cards to draw, so my turn is done. Garth is up. Okay. So he moves forward one. And one is just... One is just to here. On the path. And now he's going to take an objective card, and this demonstrates graphically what he's going to do. He's going to take this objective card. which goes onto his stack. And then these are all going to shift down. Okay. Like that. And we'll put out the next objective card. Now they're all fives, so that's good for him, bad for me. All right, and that's his turn. Moves really, really fast. Really, really good. Okay, so once again, I am now, I can get to four, five, two, math, I can get two, four, six, seven, eight, I can make it in to Santa Fe, which allows me to take an objective card. Um, next up, and I'll afford to buy a cow. Uh, I can take a TP tile, but the best one's a one right now. I can draw an ad. Oh, the problem is I can't get into, I can't get into, uh, in the Kansas City yet. I don't want to do anything that causes me to discard. So I think I will just go ahead and go up here, take this action. All right, so I'm going to go there, and I think instead of taking the TP tile, I'm going to pay two to move my train forward two. So pay two to the bank, and then I'm only going to move forward one into there because I want to upgrade the station, so I pay two. One thing that's nice about how this, this ended up is all the permanent certificates are out in front. So I definitely want to get those if I can. So I'm going to go ahead and take this guy off. So I can move my train forward if I need to. And I'm going to put that on the tile. I've upgraded the station. And now I'm going to claim this by sacrificing my darn cowboy to be the station master. I now have a permanent certificate. That is good. Throughout the game, 
and that is going to help me a lot. All right, so now it's Gar's turn. And he is, all right, for the number of specialty characters he has, or specialty employees he has, which is still two, he will move that many spaces. So he's going to move, he's going to fall down on the job. He's going to move one, two, toward Kansas City. Okay, and then if he were specializing in craftsmen, he would put out a new building, but he's not, so he don't. And his turn's done. All right, so I've got what I need to get into Kansas City and get eight. So we are going to do that right now. There I go. And I am going to keep trying to build up those. So make trading with the Indians more lucrative. I'm going to put that there. And I know he's going to put out the Cowboys for me, but I want to try. I'm, I'm hoping he'll end up taking some of these engineers so i'm going to slide that down put him out and i'm going to go ahead and take this guy and put him out and then these go up and i go to four and i have two four six seven and one permanent certificate i have eight so i'll discard fix that and we'll discard all the cards so there's eight money. And I get to go into Santa Fe with eight money. And I'm going to go ahead and take off my gold. No, you know what? I'm going to take off. Yeah. Sometimes that comes in handy, but I want to get the train moving. So I'm going to take that one off. Put that in Santa Fe. And I get a certificate, I mean to get an objective card for that. And I want to try to get cattle. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take this objective card. And I still haven't shuffled yet, so that's gonna go into my hand immediately. And so I was already that stuff, but that. And then I gotta pay a penalty. So I'm at here. So one, two, penalty. So there's my transport cost. So I end up with six. So come back down to the start. Gonna get some cowboys out there soon. We're really hoping he gets moved up on the uh, on the engineers and switches. Although I do want those certificates too so it's kind of iffy which way that's gonna go. Uh, and then I draw up my hand. One Two, three, four. Draw his card. Okay, so he's going to move forward two, which is only going to move forward one into Kansas City. And if he's specializing in uh, craftsmen, he would place a house. He is not, so that comes out. So you see, there's a variety of uh, of special actions that take place based on the specialization. So it's pretty cool. All right, again, he takes the top ones. So we got the desert tile comes out. You know what, I put this one in the wrong place, didn't I? That should go up there. And this desert tile goes here. All right, we got a cowboy coming out. Cowboy's gonna drop the job market row. And then another cowboy comes out. And there we go. Those are going to slide up. Okay, and all he does is move a token into the next city, which is Santa Fe. So he's he's pacing me right now. And then he comes back to the start, where we keep bumping into each other. And then replenish. Green TP. Okay, so you've seen four for uh, excursions up to Kansas City. We've still got a few more cards to go for him, but it is now my turn. So I'm gonna go. Um, and I believe I'm gonna go ahead and do uh, this action here. So I've got one engineer. So I'm gonna move my train forward one, which basically just gets him out of here. And I'm going to take my double action, and for my double action, I am going to... So I'm going to do the draw and discard. Okay, 
And so, first action is another jersey. Second action is a black Angus. I'll keep the black Angus. Get rid of two of these. And put them in the discard pile. So that is it. I have four cards. So I don't need to draw anymore. And that's my turn. So we get to Garth's turn. Alright, so Garth is going to move forward one. Okay, so he moves, follows me. And then now he's going to move two and try to go into a station. So he can move. He's here, he's going to move one, two. So he's only moving two, so he didn't get into the station. So that's good. And in this case, he would only just move in there and upgrade the station, get those brown, those bonus points. But he would not obviously take the uh, tiles since it's already gone. Um, and that's his turn. Again, plays very quick. Plays very tough. I don't expect to win. My turn, I'm going to go here. I'm going to discard a Dutch belt for two money. And of course, I had to pay first the two money. So I paid in two money, now I took two money. So there we go. Okay, and I'm not. I'm not going to put out a building. I need to put out a building. I may not get a cow this round. But we're about to put out new cows too. All right, I'm going to put out a building. Um, I'm going to put out. I've got one craftsman. I'm going to put out my number one building. And right now, this is the shortest route. Um, I'm just going to put that one there. Because it's early enough for me to discard something, possibly, and end up with something better. And possibly traps him, too, because he would have to randomly choose between those two paths. So I might get some money for free. So it's going to cost me two. This is one crossman, so I'm going to five. Take my change. Oh, that's two change. I need one more. Okay, so now I'm down to four money. All right, so I paid my two. I discarded a card, got two, and then I paid for the building. So, all right, so that's where we are. So I am down a card. So I get to draw one. Got another jersey. Good milk from jerseys. Okay. All right. He's going to move forward one. So he's just going to move in his space. And then he takes the highest valued TP. So he's going to take this one for two. And just throw it into his pile. Discard. I'm going to go one, two. I am going to discard Guernsey for two. For two money. And then I'm going to buy a engineer for five. So we got one, two, three, four, and five. Goes in there and we'll take this guy off. Put him on my board and I get to discard a jersey and move my certificate down one. So I'll do that, discard the jersey somewhere. Boom. And put my certificate down one. So now it's a two. Okay, so that is the end of my turn. I do not want to take that last action. So that is the end of my turn, and I get to draw two cards. So here we go. One, another Black Angus, and two, another Guernsey. So I'm going to get rid of that Black Angus somehow, which I can do with the Cattle Market, but I don't. It doesn't give me enough. Okay. All right, Garth's turn. All right, Garth is going to move forward two. All right, so we've got a decision to make. He goes there first, and now he's going to go my way or the other way. So normally you could probably just say, well, he would never go the way that's going to give you money, but I just let that be random because I, could, I, I get to choose the shortest path technically, so I can make him go there. So fair is fair, so I just roll. So one to three, four to six. B-I. 
All right, I got a four. So he moves one, two, and he gives me two money, which means the bank just gives me two money. And that might help me, because now I'm at three. So. Okay, and then he's going to, again, go to the cattle market. Based on the number of cowboys he has, he will buy the best he can buy for eight money. Um, so he has still two cowboys. So two cowboys, he can buy three for uh, three. Or he can buy a five for twelve. Unfortunately, there are no other options for him. He does not have three cowboys. He basically loses out because there's no option for him to buy anything with two cowboys right now. So, yay me. That worked out pretty good. So we discard that. I've never seen that happen in either of the Automa, but hey, works for me, right? All right, well, I'm just going to move here. I'm going to move my certificate down one. Get to three. That'll help me later, I hope. For each engineer, I can move my train forward one. Remember, I have two engineers, so I can move forward two. And so I am going to move forward one, two. Okay, and that is the end of my turn. And I have no cards to draw. All right. Garth's turn. Okay, he moves forward one, so he just goes to here. And he is going to buy whatever the cheapest uh, employee is of any type. So this, I didn't play this well, <laughs> but it gives me, it improves my odds. The cheapest row is the five row, and the only one available is this guy. I should have left the engineer for him to take. But he's been by the cheapest employee. So now, whatever one he gets next, he may change specialties. It's two out of three shot here. And that is his turn. Okay, so for my turn, I'm going to do this no matter what. I'm going to go in here and get rid of that black Angus for two money. All right, and with one cowboy. I need six money to buy a cow. There's no threes anyway, so there's really nothing I can do uh, in terms of that, except stand pat and get drawn another card at least. So that may help me. Hopefully one of my better cards comes up. And I did get the yellow, so I got a three. So now I've got uh, eight. I can definitely do into Kansas City with, well, I can go into, I got 12. All right, so three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12. I can actually go into El Paso this go around. So that's a good move. But you may not see that because this is Garth's last turn. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so here's where he makes up for the last error, or the last situation. All right, so he moves two, and both paths lead here by two. And then he has two cowboys. He's going to use one cowboy. It's this only happens if his specialties cowboys, which right now it still is. So his specialization's that he's going to use one of his cowboys to put out two more cows. So bring these in to play. Got an airshire. Another airshire. Okay. So now those are out in the market. And now he is going to use his one remaining cowboy and eight dollars to get the most he can get. Because he's used one to fill the market. So he's going to use the other one to purchase. So with one he can buy a three for six. So he's going to take one of these that just came out. So he makes up for that and buys an airshare. So you see how that worked? Because he had same as the player. He had two cowboys, he used one, and then he spent, he used the other one to buy. And he has eight dollars, so that's the one he bought. So that was the last of the Automa cards. You've now seen all of them, and now they play. So I'm now going to complete the game myself, and then we'll be back with a summary of how the game turned out, 
and scoring. That's great. Okay, so we're coming up now on the end of the game. Um, the next person to go to Kansas City is definitely going to end it because if he goes, there are uh, two workers in the top row that he's going to take. And if I go, then I can't help but take a worker and two and three. Those two workers are going to come out and it's going to end the game. And then the other player will get one more turn. So some interesting things did happen. Uh, one is that Garth did change his specialty. Um, taking the Cowboys early on, as you see, we don't have many of them here. And those came out later after the switch had already taken place. Um, meant that he tied at two for everything and then ended up going into Craftsman, which helped him because he ended up putting out and upgrading more buildings. So it's going to earn quite a bit of, quite a bit of, uh, points there. Although he's actually only got two on the board, 14 points. So where we stand right now is it is uh, Garth's turn. So I am three away from Kansas City. So I can make it on my turn. He is two away from Kansas City. He has had many um, multiple spot moves though this time around so i'm hoping that he will not go into kansas city and i can go first because if i go in then i can get that two point bonus but if he goes in at least i can strike and get in there now the one thing that could hurt me being that he's a builder is if he were to uh, uh build a uh, get a building and um, put it in front of me. And that would mean my three movement would not get me into Kansas City because I have not upgraded my movement capabilities yet. So I do have a good hand. Um, I will be able to get into Sacramento pretty straightforward thanks to the cards I have and thanks to the uh, certificates that I have. I've picked up the three uh, Station Master tiles and they were all uh, a certificate. And so I was able to grab all those, which is good. So I have seven points on the board right there. Uh, and I've got a good hand of cards. I was able to buy a Longhorn, which is gonna allow me to use that uh, objective card as well as cash in on that. So I feel good actually this time about where I am. I haven't beaten an automa yet. Um, the only time I've won is when I was playing against myself, and I won and I lost. So, anyway, that's the that's the position of the game right now. Um, I do like the way uh, Garth runs. I like the variability of it, how it can uh, uh, switch gears. Um, the specialties specialization can change uh, during the game, just like a regular player would. Um, uh, what else am I thinking here? Um, other than that, I mean, it's pretty, pretty much as easy to run as uh, Briscoe was. Um, I guess I'd give the, the edge to uh, Garth, just because uh, the cards are a little cleaner, uh, the specialization changes, and the specialization uh, focus. Uh, I think works just just a lot better. Um, or gives a more challenging game. I'm going to say better. So I guess the next step is just to go ahead and bite the bullet and see what happens. Um, we'll see what he does. Because he, if, he if he goes into uh, Kansas City, then I have one move left. And then I will, of course, go into Kansas City. So first things first, let's draw his card. He gets, oh, he gets a one movement, and he's going to take an objective. He's going to earn some freebie bonus points there, but, so he only moves one, and all roads go through this crossroad here. So he is sitting, and then he takes an objective card, so he'll take this one from the end, bring it over to his pile. And per the rules, go ahead and shift everything down. 
and put out a new objective card. So his turn's over. Until the next one now, he cannot help but to go into uh, Kansas City on his next turn. Because even if I put a tile out, which there's no building slots available to me, but if I put a building tile out, uh, he would go the other route. So he is definitely going in. So I can make a run for it and ensure that I get that two bonus. But this was what was troubling me, because I knew I had to if he went in. But now, if he did, since he didn't, not if he didn't, since he didn't, I have the option to try to get more points. And can I get more points than that two would allow? And I think it would. So I have a, I have a, uh, objective card that gives me a bonus if I have two uh, two blue TPs. But I also have a card here, I mean a Station Master tile that gives me a bonus of three if I have a uh, blue and a green. And I don't remember what that card what that card was. Now, I know there are some people who like to look through their deck and then redraw just to, to refresh their memory, but I don't agree agree with that. I think you're not allowed to look at your deck. You can look at your discards, but you can't look at your deck. Uh, and I might not want to, because what if I look at it and I go, oh, that card is going to come up, which doesn't matter because I can play it at the end of the game anyway for scoring, but uh, were it to come up and I like looked and I got to reshuffle, I would have gotten it. Now I'm not going to get it, even though I know it's there. So. I'm a purist. I'd rather just, you know, you leave your cards alone. The rules say don't look. So don't look. If you want to write them down and keep track of them, write them down and keep track of them. But otherwise, uh, just leave them where they're supposed to be. So anyway, um, my plan is when I go into, into Sacramento, uh, I'm going to take that token to get three victory points. And it's my best interest to go into Sacramento there because that will give me 10 points, whereas only going into San Francisco would give me 9, so I'll get the one extra point there. Um, can't do anything on my train, I'm not going to worry about it. I've got, basically, I've got two turns left. I can have one turn and go out first, or I can have two turns and try to get some more points, and I think, I think that's what I'm going to do here. I don't want to go uh, where Garth is, because I don't want to spend money on a uh, on a hazard tile because I don't need it. I have one hazard and that's all I need for my objectives. But I think I can get a better hand and I think getting some of that money and getting the TP token would help. So that's just a matter of do I take the green one and the eight money or do I take a blue one and less money and get that other objective card. I just don't remember if it was a five or a three and that's what bothers me. So I think I'm going to go for the green. I think I'm going to go ahead and risk him. Let him go out first, thinking I can get better than two additional victory points in this turn. So let's see how this plays out. So I'm going to go there. Because I get enough money. The other thing is I'll get, uh, for every five money, you get one victory point. And so right now I've got seven. I'm about to get eight, that'd be 15 right there, plus whatever I'd deliver in cattle, so. All right, so we're gonna do that. I'm gonna take the eight point TP out to my section. Get myself eight money. One, two, three, and five. Got a big pile of money there. And then I'll take, uh, I'll take the two actions. I'll go ahead and draw and discard, just because I've got some extra cards here anyway. And I can get more money on my delivery. So right now, these are the ones I can use. And I've got these two extras here. So I'm going to use my draw two, discard two option. Since my certificate is already as far as it can go anyway. And so we'll draw one. Okay, got a black Angus, which I don't have. And two, got another jersey. So... For the discard, now we'll just go ahead and discard. I like the green, so I'll discard this and the jersey. And that just really strengthened my hand here. 
So I've got 10, I've got 11 right here. This will get away. So I've got 11 plus 7. I do have 18. So I could go into San Francisco if I wanted to, but I'll just collect 18 gold and uh, minus fees and all that kind of stuff. That'll just give me a buffer. Or the other option is to leave two. Uh, two of my certificates there because I've got the deal here that for every two certificates I get three. So that might even be a better deal because I get five money just to get one victory point. But those two certificates will give me three, which is equal to 15 money. So, okay, so uh, that is my turn. I discarded and drew, so, or I drew and discarded, so I'm still at six cards. So, last move for Garth. Oh, he's going to buy a cow. That's going to help him a lot. Okay, so he's going to move two. So he, as predicted, is going to finish up in Kansas City. And then, using the number of cowboys he has and eight money, he buys the best cow he can. But he may not be able to get one. Let's see. He has two cowboys. And for two cowboys, he can buy a three for three. Or a five for twelve. And all that's left is fours. So... He is stuck, and that did not help him. So discard that, and I'll process Kansas City. One good thing I was able to do is get rid of these water. There was only one that showed up. They've all started coming out now. And so that gave me a path around his double-handed four, uh, four money stealing uh, tile there. I was able to come back around the back way, so that worked out really well. So I'm going to take... Top row, put the water tile down there. Take the crafter, craftsman, put him down there. And take this craftsman. And flip that off the board, game. Last round, he gets the two point chip. And then he moves one of his tokens up to Sacramento there and there's no perk for that so he's done he comes back to start these go up you still go ahead and refill them as per rules so those won't go on the board because there's no room in the market we'll just put out one of these these uh hazard tiles and we'll be done so my turn i only get one turn left so no brainer into kansas city i go and i'll go ahead and we'll just go ahead and throw this one down just grins and that's on the board and none of the employees can go out so move through all right so I am going to play my cards that's a dupe so then as we said I have six I have 11 there I have 11 12 13 14. 15, 16. So I'm going to go into 16. 16 allows me to go into Sacramento, which means I'm going to take this token. Gives me three victory points at the end. Put it on Sacramento. Don't worry. Okay. So, so if you're up 16, I'm going to take the 16. Oops. Do it right, Kevin. 16 money potential. Okay, so I did that. Discard my cards, got the 16 money. Then I put my token and now count my penalty. My transport cost is 1, 2, 3. So I'll just pay 3 money out of here. 1, 2, 3. And. Um, I get no perk. Technically finish the turn out, bring him here, and shift that up. Put that out. And officially draw six cards, but I'm not gonna bother with that because the game is now over. So now I will total things up and uh, review the score. So pretty, pretty cool game. Pretty cool, uh, pretty smooth running. Um, I believe I went through the cards twice, 
went through the deck twice and I'm now on the third iteration. So I think I shuffled them two times. Um, it plays pretty darn well. I do like it. He'll cover every base on the map once. He'll have specialty markers that he'll use. He'll take actions of the specialty on his own. And then he'll also take them really powerfully if he uses a specialization skill. So I will add up the score and get right back. Grew up dreaming of being a cowboy. All right, so I've got the score totaled up, and here is how it played out. Going for the money um, worked out pretty well for me. This you see the score of the Briscoe uh, video comparatively. Um, I did end up with quite a quite a chunk of money here, ended up with about 28 money at the end, so that gave me five points. Then looking at the houses, he always killed me with 14, and I had. Two. We matched uh, station for station. We had the same ones, so we got the same perks. So that was 24, 24 each. It was a wash. All right, and then looking at the uh, upgraded stations, I took that. I've got three of them for four, and he only got one. Uh, hazards, he had two for seven. I had one for three. Uh, cattle, I outdid him because he switched mid-game and the initial draw brought out uh, we had several of the West Highland 4 cards that came out early in the game and he could never take advantage of those because he didn't get his Cowboys built up and he switched specializations so uh, he ended up with 7, I ended up with 14 uh, objectives, obviously he's going to always kill his objectives because they just, they just take them they don't have to meet him. And uh, so my two were uh, eight. And as I mentioned, I had the one that I want to look at. And that would have actually given me five points had I taken the blue TP. But I would have had less money. So the difference between eight and two would have been six. That would have been probably one more point of money. So I guess the five would have been better than the three plus one. So, so uh, I guess that would have been one point higher. So... We'll see where that where it got me. Might not have mattered. So then we're looking at uh, the Station Master bonuses. Uh, I did get nine points for that. The certificates, the permanent certificates, and leaving those two temporary certificates uh, gave me six. And then uh, for a pair of TPs, uh, a, black, a blue one and a green one, got three points. So that was nine. So then nobody got the employee bonus. I did get the speed bonus of three. And he got the going out bonus of two. And the final result, close. Garth still beat me 76 to 72. But that's a lot better than the first game I tried where he creamed me 95 to 61. So uh, I'm, I'm happy about how that came out. I felt really good, felt really close. It's probably one of the closest games I've played. Um, just shows what a great game this is. And uh, I am very happy with how the Automa turned out. Garth did a very good job. Um, not much more to say. I think uh, either one, Garth or uh, Briscoe, you can't go wrong with. Try them both yourself, see what you like. Um, one thing that would be interesting, and I had planned on doing this, but then I thought actually executing it on video would be pretty boring, is I was going to have Briscoe go against Garth. Because... Uh, Briscoe always goes first, Gar first, Garth always goes second, so they can deal with that, and you just run each, you know, according to their to their rule set, and just run them up the board. I mean, basically, you're not really doing anything on the tiles, uh, except putting things out and facilitating the, uh, the mechanisms, but uh, let them just go, go to town and uh, go through both decks of cards, but... I think I'm going to give it a rest for now. Um, you've seen them both in action. That might be a fun experiment for somebody to do a session on. Uh, I think I think they actually would work well playing against each other, and then they might work well having a three-player game. Uh, although you might just get slaughtered by having all those extra uh, buildings in your way and stuff. But uh, but anyway, um, but the board, you know, the player board would, uh, the hiring board would move a little slower too. So. 
who knows maybe one day give it a try but uh, for now that is the end of my um, two-part uh, demo of the two automa briscoe and garth and uh, i hope you've enjoyed watching it and uh, we're excited about the new uh, expansion coming out for uh, great western trail coming out at uh, origins this year so um hopefully a lot more goodness to come but the game is already great as it is thanks so much for watching i uh, hope you've enjoyed this and god bless you bye bye oh.